Hello and welcome to this video of objects in the data warehouse. The next object which we are going to examine are called info objects. At the end of this video, you will know what info objects are and what kind of info objects exist in the data warehouse. The info object is very fundamental to SAP BI. This is another component of the data warehouse that you will be heavily involved in using on a day-to-day -day basis. So what are info objects? They are the fundamental building blocks of the data warehouse, the smallest grain of information you can actually find. And they are used to model real-world properties or characteristics. An example which we can take from the previous lesson on info providers, I spoke about the customer John Smith coming to buy a mobile phone from our company. These characteristics that we use to define the transaction are called info objects. In this case, the customer name, the product name or the model name, and the date which John came to buy that product are all grouped together as info objects. So all these info objects are grouped together to create a wealth of information and all this info can be stored in an info provider. In this case, we show an info cube here. So now let's talk about types of info objects. The first one is the object of type key figures. This is used to model the data that is to be evaluated, the business data, so to say. In our customer example, the price which John purchased the phone is modeled as the info object of type key figure. Key figures are always numerical in nature. For example, weight, length, area, revenue, and so on. The second type is the info object of type characteristics. This is more alphabetical or alphanumeric in nature. They are objects that are used to analyze key figures. Taking our example again, the customer is a good example of a characteristic info object. The model name of the phone is another one. These two combine to analyze the key figure price. Next up is the info object of type unit. Sometimes key figures do not come in the same metric or unit of measure. So you would have to add a unit to use to convert the key figures into one base unit. The price of the phone is a very good example in this case. If we had two customers buying, one in Japan and another in the UK, we would have to convert both currencies into one base one before actually showing a report that compares both key figures. Length is another example. So the idea is to be able to compare apples with apples. The next type of info object on the list is the time characteristic. These are the info objects that are used to denote date and time. As an example, companies have their financial year identified by a fiscal year. We can use an info object of time characteristics to denote this property. We use time characteristics to compare figures with snapshots taken at different times. For example, comparing sales figures in the past five years. So those are the type of info objects they are. In the data warehouse, you can choose to create your own info objects or use the ones supplied by SAP. SAP has some predefined objects in the business content that we can use right out of the box. These objects already define commonly used info objects like fiscal year, for example, price and and so on. So now you have an idea what info objects are, what they are used for, and what types of info objects exist in the data warehouse. We spoke about the types of info objects, which are the key figures, characteristics, time characteristics, and the unit. So now I shall show you a screencast of how you can create your own info objects. So now we're back again at the data warehousing workbench. On the left hand side, we have under the modeling tab, the info objects option. So here we can actually see the info objects which are present in our system by clicking down here. But let us start by creating our own info objects. So here is our demo info area which we created in the info provider video. So if you right click on that, you can choose create info object catalog. So what this does is going to create folders where you can actually save your info objects. And these catalogs can be either of type characteristics or key figures. 
So here we can type in the technical name of our catalog. So let us call that ZI catalog. And we'll name that info. Let's start with demo info object catalog. And then we leave that. And then we leave this info object catalog of type characteristics. And we click on create. So on the left, so on the right hand side, we can see the options of the catalog. We can leave the default settings for now and click on check and activate. So we can see that the catalog has been successfully activated. So we would add our characteristics info object under this catalog. But before we do that, let us create another catalog for the key figures. So let's call that ZI catalog with a K. And this is our demo info object catalog key figures. So we select the key figure option here and then click on create. We check that and activate. It is also successful. So now we're ready to go. So under the info object catalog we can right click on that and also select create info object. So here we're gonna have the technical name for the info object. Let us use the example which you had in the presentation where we have the customer John Smith buying a mobile phone from our company. So first of all, our first info object will be the customer name. So let's call that Z I customer name. So that is a demo customer name. And leave that as default and then select continue. Here on the right hand side, we have the properties of the characteristic. So we can give in a short description. Customer name. There are some required fields. One of them is the data type. We have to select what kind of data it is. In this case, it's the character string. We can also have numeric characters. And these are just character strings with only digits. We can also have date fields and also time fields. So for now, let us select the character string. We also have to select the length. So for a name, we can start with 40 characters. And those are the only required fields. There are other options which we can set as well using the tabs up here. So we can say that our characteristic comes with master data and also with texts. We can also specify hierarchies if the hierarchies exist. But for now, let us give in a plain info object. So we would click here, check, and activate. So our info object is active, and as we can see from this green box here as well. So that is our info object under the info object catalog. So let us go ahead and create one more info object for the product model. Let's call that ZI product name. So give a short description. And let's select 40 characters for the product name as well. So we check. Okay, we have, we have select the data type also. This is also a character string. We check it and activate it.
So that's complete. So we have a customer name and a product name. So let us add the info objects of type key figures. So we create info object, given a technical name. This info object is going to be used for the price of the product. So this is the I price demo product price. As we can see here, the options for the key figures are different. So we can we also have short descriptions. And we also have to specify what type of key figure it is. We have amount, number, date, time, integer, quantity. Depending on what kind of key figure we want to create, we will select the appropriate type. So we can use amount for price. And we can use quantity for measurement key figures like length, weight, and so on. So for now, let us choose amount. And then we say our data type is currency. And then we can choose a fixed currency if we know what currency our data is coming in with. So we can do that or write here zero currency. Zero currency leaves us with some flexibility on what kind of price or what kind of currency we can actually import. We shall see how that works in a little video. So let us check and activate this. So now we have the three info objects, one for customer name, one for the product name, and one for the price. We can also have other key figures like the date when the product was bought, for example. But you get the idea, so we shall go into more detail later on how to gather all this information and use them in a real-world situation. So that's it for this video. Thank you for listening. See you in the next video.